Hello everyone this is part 16 of what if Naruto was Iron Man, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. When Naruto awoke he found himself being tapped on the arm by Tenten who said, you're being challenged for your code. Naruto stood up and stretched and said, thanks but, dot how did you get by that? Tenten said in a sickening sweet voice, us girls stick together Naruto-kun, besides you still have to take me dancing on the water in the pale moonlight. Naruto rubbed his head and then as a memory clicked his eyes got wide and saw Tenten walking away swaying her ass. Naruto shook his head and thought, did you tell her Eva? Eva said, tell her no, show her, yes. Naruto thought as he walked to the arena, why? Eva said, you forget that a part of me is her mother and I see her as my daughter because of that and a mother looks after her child, even from her idiot father and possible boyfriend. Naruto felt himself stop walking realizing Eva took momentary control and then felt he could move and thought, Iwa nins, as he looked at three nins all five feet ten, all wearing black spandex suits and face mask. One was a bear, a eagle, and a wolf. Anko said, all right now, remember the rules and begin, as she jumped back. Wolf and bear both ran past Naruto at an angle trapping Naruto inside a triangle between the three Iwa nins and eagle had pulled out a kunai and it began to float in the air three inches above eagle's hand and it pointed toward Naruto and then toward the contestant area and eagle said, tell me Namika's team, do you know what a tracking seal is? Naruto blinked as he glanced at both the other Iwa nins who were each holding a kunai like eagle was that was all three moving toward Naruto and then the stands. Naruto said, I figure it has to do with tracking something. I'm not a seal expert so I don't honestly know, why? Bear said, because Namika's team, our clan, the Shuri clan, was nearly destroyed by your father. The only ones who survived meeting him was our mother who had to stay back because she was pregnant with all three of us. Dot dot. Because of the loss of our clan due to the hands of your father our mother went into depression and had to take medicine for it. Point three months ago it were received word that the Yondime had a son who was rumored to becoming even more powerful than his father and our mother began to fear that you would finish what your father started and she became more depressed until one night she killed herself. Wolf whose voice was female said, because of you and your father every member of the Shuri clan is dead besides the three of us. With the kunai that killed our father that our mother used to kill herself we each have vowed to destroy the Namika's clan and so looked at the famous Horatian kunai that your father created and discovered inside the handle was a vial of blood. Naruto eyes narrowed and thought, oh shit, don't tell me, and said, what's so special about a vial of blood? In a bored tone as he pulled out a book and opened it while pretending to read it and as he finished a page he ripped the page out and let it blow across the field. Key was felt from all three sides of him and Eagle said, what's so special about this vial of blood is that it was full of Namika's blood, the blood of your father, we created these three kunais each with a tracking seal on them to find anyone with the blood of Namika's in them. Naruto looked up and said, hmm, you say something? Dropping another page out of the book making a few people who knew Kakashi snicker and Guy stood up and screamed, damn you Kakashi and your cool hip attitude passing on to Naruto-kun. Naruto said, well I don't know but it appears that you three are even worse seal experts than me because I'm standing right here and that thing is going between me and the crowd so either you messed up the seal or the seal you're using is not as accurate as some might think. Bear said, or it's pointing to that whore of a sister you have up in the stands, making everyone wide-eyed except Naruto who dropped a third page that blew across the arena floor. Temari eyes got wide and thought, no, it can't be, as she remembered what happened before the first round. Naruto said, I'm an only child, my father died sealing the QB in me and my mother died giving birth to me so I am sure you are mistaken, as he unleashed some key. Wolf said, no mistake Namikas, we saw and heard everything you said and did in the exam room so it's easy to figure out that the blonde bitch on Suna team is your sister, same father, different mother, you said her mom was here in Kanoa until she disappeared while on a mission. She was pregnant with that whore and you tried to play it off until you could talk to her privately about it. Dot she is the eldest child of Minato Namikas, the Yondime Hokage. Iwa has a picture of the Kazekage and his wife at his inauguration ceremony in our history books in the academy. The Kazekage wife had brown hair, 
The Kazekage is a redhead, there is no way a brunette and redhead had a blonde child. Dot but don't worry. After we cripple you we are going to go after her and my brothers are going to have some fun with Ak. As she suddenly started to gag as she was lifted off the ground by a six feet tall fox that was now standing behind her who had nine tails with one holding her in the air by her neck. Naruto said, while I may not be a seal expert I am not a slouch either, my father made a jutsu that was feared because of a kunai, dot and so did I, as he looked at eagle and bear and found they also were being held up by a fox with nine tails. The fox holding wolf said, I figured out how to store chakra from the Kyubi no Kitsune into a kunai and using a jutsu I made before I was even out of the ninja academy called sexy no jutsu which is an actual shapeshift combining it with the knowledge of kijbunshin no jutsu I have created these. Kijbunshin made from the chakra of the Kyubi making it where we can last for more than one hit shapeshifted to look like the Kyubi with the combined knowledge of the original Naruto and since we only have one chakra in our body instead of two our control is as good as the original and we don't have the to worry about harmful side effects. We call this the Kitsune Bunshin no Jutsu, as the fox dropping wolf and the other two Kyubi did as well. The three masked teens were all holding their necks and Naruto closed his book and said as he unleashed massive amounts of ki making even those up in the stands to sweat, now you little dipshits, you made several very stupid mistakes that is going to cost you. The first is you came here talking shit about getting revenge on me because of your mother and father who I never even met, as each of the foxes used a tail like a whip and slashed across the nin on the ground in front of them. Naruto continued, the second mistake you made was actually coming up with a plan to try and hurt me or my future family, as another tail slashed the teens across the backs making them scream out in pain since the Kyubi chakra was burning them each time they came into contact with it. Naruto said, next you insulted woman in general by calling one a whore, don't disrespect woman in front of me, as another tail slashed across their back. Naruto smirked as he walked over toward Bear pulling out a kunai and said, then you start speaking about my business without permission and as a feudal lord I have the right to kill you for such. As the fox behind Bear picked him up by his waist into the air making him scream in pain and a tail grabbed each arm forcing his hands together and Naruto slammed the kunai through Bear's hands and twisting them leaving the kunai in his hands at the fox behind him went up in smoke dropping him to the ground. Naruto walked over to Eagle who was picked up just like Bear had been and Naruto pulled out another kunai and Naruto said, next you actually threaten me, as he stabbed the kunai and twisted it also as the fox went up up in smoke. Naruto then walked over toward Wolf who was trying to get free out of the fox grip who was holding her spread eagle and arms wide and Naruto pulled out a pair of senbans holding one in each hand and said, the last and most stupid thing you did was threaten to have your brothers rape a woman. I hate rapists more than anything which is why I have ended your brother's ninja careers by cutting all the tendons and bones in their hands so they won't be able to hold a weapon, make hand signs, or even eat without help. Dot but you actually bragged about planning to rape my sister, for that, I will take not only your ninja career but your ability to have children. As he stabbed the senbans in her stomach where her ovaries were sending chakra into the kunais and the fox behind her pulled real fast on each of the tails and because of QB chakra and the speed of this attack it caused her hands and feet to fall off as her wrist and ankles became cauterized as the fox went up in smoke. Her screams echoed across the arena so loud that a few people who had sensitive ears had to cover them for fear of going deaf. Naruto ignored the looks everyone gave him or the wide area to walk as he sat down in the stands and sat his elbows on his knees and put his face into the palms of his hands and a few seconds later he felt a presence and said without looking up, yes, it's true, as he leaned back and looked at the face of Temari who had walked over. Kankuro said, but, dot but what does that make her to us? Naruto sighed as he saw all three sand sibs looking at him and said, Temari is the eldest, she is my half-sister on her father's side and she is both of yours half-sister on your mother's side. That makes me your step-brother, surprise, in a deadpan voice. Temari frowned and said, but, dot why was I never told? Why were we never told? Naruto said, do you want the truth or do you want an honorable reason? Kankuro narrowed his eyes and said, what do you mean? Naruto said, the year Temari was born was the same year your father became Yondime Kazekage, your mother was in the bingo book as was the information on her bloodline. Suna has no bloodline since the Sandime Kazekage disappeared. Connect the dots. Temari said, are you saying that our father kidnapped our mother or? Naruto quickly said, no, that's not what I'm saying. I won't lie and say I like the Kazekage because truthfully I don't because of what he did to Gara and your mother. 
Sealing a demon into a baby to save a village is one thing but to do it because you want to make a weapon, sorry, any respect he earned was lost when I heard about that. That is why I question about how exactly he was chosen to become the Kazekage and how exactly he married your mother and then turns around and has her killed after she gave him what he wanted but the only one who knows the truth and is still alive is the Kazekage and I doubt he will tell anyone. As for your mother's bloodline, you have it already Temari, that I know for sure, it's why you can use wind jutsu without hand signs after you learned them. Any wind jutsu you learn once you are comfortable using them your body remembers them and so you can redo them without hand signs. Temari blinked and thought, so that's why I can do the Kamaitaki like that. Naruto said, well I am sure you all have a lot to think about and probably want to deny the fact I am related to you or call me a liar for what I said about the Kazekage and if he is still alive when the finals get here he can challenge me for slighting his honor if he wants, as he got up and started to walk away when a hand stopped him. He looked back and saw the hand was from Temari and she asked, what do you mean if he's still alive? Naruto said, Kanoa been warned that Orokimaru plans to assassinate the Kazekage so he can sit by the Hokage using the Kazekage face so he could try to kill the Sandime when the Hidden Sound Village attacks at the finals. Because of the new treaty that was formed Kumo and Mist will be here to aid Kanoa in protecting it with the power of three Jinchurikis, four cages, and I don't know how many Junin and Black Ops. That's not counting if Suna aids Kanoa but I got the feeling you're all going to be ordered to attack Kanoa if Orokimaru succeeds in assassinating the Kazekage, and I am sure Kanoa will think of that so I figure now that people heard those Iwa Nins talk about you being my sister that Orokimaru disguised as the Kazekage might just sell you to Iwa in return for them joining in attacking Kanoa which will result in the next Great Shinobi War. Dot dot. If you ever want to sleep without Shukaku taking your soul let me know brother. I can make it where you won't ever hear Shukaku again, still keep your powers and sleep without worry. Sire, as he shushined away in a swirl of water and appeared in the arena and said, here I am, as he heard Eva saying it was his turn. Just then a team walked down and Naruto thought, yeah, I am being set up, as the team from the Hidden Sound Village walked down and Naruto looked up and saw the Sandime give him a slight nod from where he had joined and Naruto looked back down and said, so you three beat Kurenai right? Yuzo said, she was weak, a single attack and she went down. Naruto said, well I'll be sure to make this match harder. There is something you should know though, your attacks can't touch me. Dosu said, we will see about that, as he raised his arm and struck it with a kunai before the proctor had a chance to say a word. Dosu smirked at this waiting for Naruto to react from the attack, dot and waited, dot and waited. Naruto said, so, dot are you going to attack or what? Everyone was shocked, especially seeing Kurenai go down from the same attack and Kin pulled out a set of senbans with bells on them and threw them near Naruto and the bells rang and Kin said, how do you like my genjutsu? Right now you should be seeing several versions of me all around you and not be able to tell which is real. Naruto turned his head to where Kin had moved to and said, actually genjutsu doesn't work on me, neither does sound, or wind, as he looked at Zaku who was scowling and he raised his arms and screamed, Zankuha as a strong blast of wind fired at Naruto and Temari gasped thinking a silent prayer for the brother she just met. As the dust cleared Naruto was standing there completely unharmed and he said, that was, pathetic, as he took a step forward while unleashing a little key. The sound nins took a step back and Naruto put his hands together and said, Tajukijbunshin no jutsu, as the entire arena was covered in smoke and when it cleared everyone paled as there was over 200 Naruto in the arena and they all smirked and said together, this is your last chance, surrender or die. Zaku screamed, screw you, as he began to raise his arms but that was the last mistake he made as all the clones rushed him and his teammates. After 10 minutes Dosu and Zaku were both twitching on the ground in pain and Kin was looking scared as there was over 30 Naruto each with a Senban needle at different places on her body ready to stab her and she said, alright, I give, the password is don't forget my Ika Ika. All the clones went up in smoke and Naruto said, Proctor, I got both but that was as far as I am going. I will be a spectator for the rest of the exams. I will be back in a month as I have duties back in wave. Sire. As he jumped into the air and flew away leaving everyone completely at a loss of words. Shikamaru said, and the people of our village treated him like shit, troublesome. When Naruto was nearing wave country he saw black smoke rising into the air. He frowned and thought, wonder what that's from, as he increased his speed. When Naruto got close enough to wave he saw what the smoke was coming from and thought, oh no, 
please no, as he quickly flew to where the smoke was coming from. As he landed he looked around and saw the burned remains of all the buildings in the country and he saw bodies laying on the ground dead from various forms of attacks. Naruto thought, Eva, scan for anyone alive, as he began to look around while heading toward Tazuna house. Eva said, I got several heat signatures coming from Tsunami place but besides that I can't detect anyone. Naruto quickly ran toward the house and when he got there he stopped as he saw the front door was destroyed and he heard a voice say, you might as well join us for some tea. Naruto frowned as he walked inside and saw Tazuna, Anari, and Tsunami all tied to a chair with Danzo behind Tazuna, Sai behind Anari and Leela behind Tsunami with a man in an Akatsuki cloak and a spiral mask on his face sitting at the table. Naruto said, Uchiha Madara, recognizing his description from Itachi report. Madara chuckled and said, So I see you really do know me, or at least know of me, as he sat his mask on the table. Naruto looked at Leela and saw her eyes glossed over and Madara saw this and said, Hypnosis. Did you really think I would miss her replacing herself after I defeated her? I let her live so she could be a tool for me to find your weakness and found it she did. I just had to wait until she sent a message to me and come here. I must say you did a great job on this country but it seemed it grew too fast and destroyed itself. Naruto said, let them go. Madara said, hmm. Oh, all right, I just wanted to get your attention. You see I am a reasonable man. You have something in your stomach I want and. Leela moved the kunai from tsunami neck down to her belly and Madara said, and I have something in her stomach you want. You come with me and my men peacefully and I will leave this little family alone and leave the land of wave alone as well as long as they never leave the island. So, do we have a deal? Anari said, don't do it dad. Tsunami said, run Naruto-kun. Don't give them what they want. Naruto frowned and said, do I have your word Madara that you and everyone with you and following you will leave my family alone? Madara smiled and said, smart boy, most would only think of asking for my word and not the words of my men. I like that. Very well, we will leave them alive if you surrender in the next 30 seconds, as he pulled out an old pocket watch. Naruto closed his eyes and thought, Eva, don't you know what to do? Eva said sadly, yes Naruto-kun, and he opened his eyes and said, agreed. You leave my family alone and I will come with you and you can have the QB but you have to release Leela as well. Madara stood up and said, good, place your hand on my shoulder and I will take us to where we will extract the QB from you at. Naruto looked at Danzo and Sai and dropped the remote ball down his pant leg and he put his hand on Madara's shoulder and then in an instant they were both gone. When they disappeared the remote ball that had rolled under the table turned into Eva as she quickly busted through the table throwing a kunai at Danzo and Sai at the same time killing them before she tackled Leela to the ground. At that moment however the bomb Leela was standing on exploded killing everyone in the house and destroying the remote ball. A few moments earlier Naruto and Madara appeared in a cave and Naruto blinked before the seal drawn in the cave floor began to glow and he was trapped on his hands and knees as Madara walked out of the circle. At that moment Eva said in his head, I'm sorry Naruto, I didn't know Leela was standing on a bomb and, as she remained silent and Naruto's eyes went wide as tears began to fall. He closed his eyes and thought, Eva, thank you for everything, as he saw Madara join nine other figures on the fingers of a statue and all of them began to flash through hand signs and Naruto screamed in pain as the QB chakra began to be pulled from him. After 30 seconds he passed out from the pain and the extraction continued. Ten minutes later the body of Naruto was covered in the armor causing all of the Akatsuki members to go wide-eyed and the armor began to unclip and unfasten itself from Naruto and Sasori asked, what's going on? Once the chest piece fell off everyone saw the power cell in Naruto body full of red chakra and the front cover of it shattered. In that moment Naruto body arched as he sent one final request to Eva before an explosion of QB chakra was released. The QB chakra quickly hit all the members of Akatsuki causing them to cry out in pain except for Madara who quickly used his Sharingan to escape. Seals on Naruto body began to glow before they exploded with the destructive force of hundreds of exploding tags. After the explosion settled down all of Akatsuki except for Madara was dead and the power cell that had been in Naruto chest began to glow faintly as the pieces of armor began to link back together with the power cell inside of it and once the body of Iron Man became whole he stood up and waited. Five days later Madara returned to the cave and began to look through the charred rubble and corpses gathering the Akatsuki rings when a seal began to glow catching his attention. 
Madara said, what the, as he looked around and saw the seal on all the walls. Metal hitting rock was heard and Madara turned and saw the form of Iron Man standing up and he said, what the hell? Who are you and how did you get in here? Iron Man raised his arm and said, who am I? I am Iron Man and you. You're dead. As he raised his left arm and the crystal inside began to glow as Chakra began to form and Madara saw this and quickly tried use his Sharingan to escape like he did before and Iron Man chuckled and said, don't you recognize your own seal from your home Sandai Mizukage? This is the seal that allows only you to use Chakra only slightly modified. Now I will have my revenge for what you did to my family and friends. Goodbye. As the thrust cannon fired at Madara who was trying to figure a way out and since he couldn't use Chakra he could not replace himself and the beam hit him destroying his body completely. Iron Man lowered his arm and the voice of Eva said, it's done Naruto-kun. They won't ever harm anyone else again. Your brothers and sister are safe along with Tenten. Time skip. When the day of the finals arrived there were several notable people present. The Rakage, Kazekage, Mizukage, Hokage along with their honor guard the Lightning Lord and several other distinguished people. All of them looking for one person who hadn't been seen in a month. The Rakage said, where is he? He should be here by now. The Mizukage said, since Leela is not here they might be working on restoring his clan, with a giggle. The Hokage giggled as well and looked at the sky and said, well we can't wait any longer we might as well start, as he sent the signal to the Proctor. Genma nods and said, well it's time to start our, what the hell? as a loud explosion was heard as a dust cloud hit the arena from something hitting the ground hard. As the dust cloud began to clear a silver metal looking suit of armor could be seen on one knee while the other leg was standing halfway and the armor began to stand and Genma said, who are you and what are you doing here? The armor said, my codename is War Machine I was sent to fulfill the last request of Naruto Namikas, Lord of Wave Country. Just then there was several Shushan and all the cage beside the Kazekage were in the arena as well as a Chigo who said, what do you mean the late Naruto Namikas? Where's my nephew? War Machine said, the day he left Kanoa and returned to Wave Country he discovered his country had been attacked by Root and Akatsuki. Everyone but his fiancée Leela, Tsunami who was with his unborn child, Anari, his future stepson, and Tazuna his future father-in-law had been killed and their homes destroyed. Madara Uchiha along with Danzo and his son Sai had his family held hostage and offered an exchange. The lives of his family in return for him surrendering himself to them so they could extract the QB. Naruto after signaling me to try and rescue his family agreed to surrender in hopes of escaping. I killed Danzo and his son Sai but I did not know about the bomb that was in the house and by that time Madara and Naruto had left. The bomb killed his loved ones and by the time it went off Akatsuki had already tried to take the QB only to fall into Naruto trap. The Hokage asked, what trap? War Machine said, he turned his own body into a chakra bomb so when they were trying to extract the QB it went off killing all of Akatsuki. To save his brothers and sister along with the rest of his precious people he gave his life to end Akatsuki once and for all including Uchiha Madara who is now dead, shocking everyone. At this Temari and Tenten both screamed as they began to cry and all those who cared for Naruto bowed their head. War Machine turned to Tenten and said, Tenten, would you please come here, making everyone look at War Machine and Tenten. Tenten who had tears in her eyes walked over to War Machine and asked, what do you want, in a hysterical voice. War Machine said, Naruto asked me to tell you that he loved you and he was sorry he never got to give you that dance. Tenten eyes watered as she began to sob and War Machine said, Tenten. You know Naruto past, where he came from, who he was and what he was. You also know who I am and who I was. Right. Tenten said, yes, I know who you are either, as she covered her face. War Machine said, would you help me save him? Making everyone look at War Machine in shock. Temari asked, what do you mean save him, how can you save someone who's dead? In an angry voice. War Machine turned back to Temari and said, I have a way that might save him. If it works then he can be saved. If it doesn't work either nothing happens or Tenten will die, shocking everyone. The Sandime asked, what is it you're planning to do? War Machine said, Tenten knows what I am talking about and it is her choice to take the chance or not. She is the only one who can do it and I won't tell anyone what it is. The Sandime frowned and Tenten looked at War Machine and said, you want me to merge with you like you did with him when he was Iron Man, don't you? War Machine said, yes. 
Tenton nods and wipes the tears from her eyes and slowly stood up and said, fine, let's do it. War Machine said, just put on the necklace. As to everyone's shock War Machine disappeared in a puff of smoke as a necklace fell to the ground. Tenton picked it up and the Sandime said, wait, what are you doing? Tenton sniffed and heard Eva in her head and said, during the one month break between the second round and the finals I was supposed to be killed in an accident at my family home when the gas line to the furnace that we used to make our weapons leaked out and exploded. Dot dot. Naruto found out a way for a person to send a memory back in time at the cost of a person's life. He sent a memory of me being killed back to himself before the Chunin exams and he warned me of how it was to happen and when I checked the gas line I found it was ready to break from being worn out. I can do the same thing by merging with this armor like he did and then having the attack that would activate the jutsu that would allow me to send a memory back to myself I could warn Naruto about the attack on Wave and save his friends and family. It's the least I can do for him. Everyone was shocked and the Sandime said, are you sure Tenton? I mean I have never heard of this. Tenton said, well there is only one way to find out. I need Kakashi for it to work, please Hokage Sama. The Sandime frowned and said, Kakashi. Kakashi appeared in the arena in a swirl of leaves and Tenton slipped on the necklace and everyone saw as the silver armor appeared covering Tenton and Kakashi asked, what do you need me to do? A video display showed Naruto holding a Raisingan and Kakashi holding a Chidori and everyone saw as it zoomed in on Kakashi eyes and everyone was shocked as they saw Naruto be destroyed. War Machine said, this armor is alive, it is what actually travels time but it needs the chakra of the person inside to use it. As she held up her hand and the armor formed a raising gun and Tenton said, please hurry. I don't know how long my chakra will last. Kakashi looked at the Sandime who bowed his head and nods and Kakashi raised his hiatus and went through hand signs and formed a Chidori and attacked the raising gun and as both attacks hit a shock wave went through the area and Tenton screamed in pain as Kakashi Sharingan hit her. As Tenton disappeared everyone was shocked and looked at each other and Kakashi slowly covered his hiatus and asked, do you think it will work? The Sandime said, I don't know Kakashi. There are a great many things I will never know. Naruto was a unique individual to do what all he did. We will never know if it worked but I hope and pray that Naruto and Tenten both live on in another timeline and find happiness. Temari wiped a tear from her eyes and thought, please. Dot let this work so that I could get to know my brother. Good luck Panda. Tenten groaned as she tried to move and thought, what the hell happened? I feel like Lee and Neji both went all out on me while I was tied to a log. Silence was her answer and she thought, Eva, you there. Silence was her answer again and she thought, what the hell, as she sat up and looked around. Just then a beeping noise was heard and Tenton looked toward the beeping noise and saw she was in her bed and the beeping noise was her alarm clock and a voice said, good morning Tenton. Tenton looked at where the voice came from and she asked, Eva, is that you? Eva said, yeah, we arrived in the past yesterday and I brought you here and explained a few things to your father. He said he would go along with whatever we got planned as long as you take it slow and make sure you can live with the results of your decisions. Tenton rubbed her head and asked, when are we exactly? Eva said, it's two weeks until the day Naruto should pop into this timeline from the first future where you died. Between now and then I am going to take care of a few things. The Naruto you see in the village is not the one you will know in the future and any relationship you have with him now would be lost when the other Naruto gets here so the best thing you can do is train and go about your normal life. Tenton frowned and asked, what are you going to do? Eva said, right now Naruto has no knowledge of his life with Tsunami and Leela besides being friends to Tsunami who had been raped by some mercenaries. He also will realize that any future he could have had with Yugao is lost also because her fiancé is alive and you heard the info Naruto found out about Temari being his half-sister so that relationship is out. If you want then you could have him all to yourself since him and I have grown apart since he's not the Naruto that I have come to know as a feudal lord and family man and I won't force that life on him again because it was changing him into someone he's not so like that memory I showed you I am going to become the guardian of the Namika's clan and I am going to work on helping Naruto prepare for the challenges that are coming. Tenten thought a moment and said, so you're going to hide the knowledge of his life with Leela and Tsunami. Eva said, even you don't know everything that happened between them so you can't really tell him much either. When I explain to him about you and me coming back all I am going to tell him is that he tried to control everything and worked himself until he was weak and Akatsuki came for him then. 
I will tell him that you and him were just starting out as friends and were thinking about more and that you know about his past life so that way he won't have to hide anything from you and you both can start on basically a level field. I have left you the war machine armor. I have my own armor that I am using now to have a body that was modified from feudal Lord Naruto when he died. Thanks to all the work we done I now have unlimited chakra and I can replace my chakra as soon as I lose it so I am immortal now unless someone were able to completely destroy this armor and what's inside. Tenton said, I see, so how do I use this armor? Eva said, since I know you're a water element I have downloaded all information on water jutsu as well as chakra control and elemental control exercises into that suit along with your mother's program code named mom. I will download all the elemental information and jutsu that Naruto learned into his suit as well as some upgrades to make it where he has the suit feudal Lord Naruto had. His suit will have the AI codename Eva. From now on I will be codenamed Riku. Tenten asked, why Riku and why Mom? Riku said, Mom stands for motherly operating machine. Since the personality for that AI is basically your mom's memories as they were before I originally became active meaning they are as close to your real mom as they would be and since a part of me recognizes you as my daughter she would help you out as best as your real mom would. Hopefully. As for Riku, it stands for Retroactive Integrated Knowledge Unit. Dot dot. I have knowledge on all the operating systems as well as the your armors and any upgrades you come up with since they will link with me once a day downloading any important info so I can check things to make sure nothing dangerous happens to you and Naruto. I also have all of Naruto knowledge of Jutsu, Seals, Taijutsu, Kenjutsu, Genjutsu, Illusions, Diplomacy, and other things and as time goes by I will also gain your knowledge so that way if you and Naruto do in fact become married in the future then your children and grandchildren will have your knowledge to learn from. Tenten said, well, what if we don't get together? Riku said, I believe you will. After all you both were willing to die for the other. That gives you a big bond right there. Tenten said, maybe, dot but I want to get to know him and I mean the real him and he gets to know me and we take our time. Riku said, that's good. Well I should give you the cover story for me so when we meet again and we interact you can know the story and no one will find out I am not actually a human but a machine. With Naruto sexy no jutsu that I copied it will be very difficult besides a medical scan to find out the truth. I have talked to your father and we have agreed that I will be Riku, your aunt who left the elemental nations shortly before the QB attack and I never came back because I thought that you and Naruto had died. Tenten asked, how will you explain knowing Naruto? Riku said, I have a lot of info on Kushina, his mother as well as his father thanks to conversations with his uncle Ichigo. I can say that I was a friend of Kushina and Minato and that I had met your father seven months back when I was passing through when he went on that resupply mission and he wanted to keep it a surprise that I was alive. Tenten asked, is that why you look like the redhead Eva but with brown hair like my mom? Riku said, yes. Dot now I must be going. Mom has been listening to all this and she will explain to you about the armor slowly to get you used to it. Also I put a couple of gravity seals on your back to help you get stronger and faster that mom can release for you on mental command. Tenton frowned and asked, are there any other surprises that you haven't told me? Riku said, well, your side has been replaced with an upgraded chakra side that will never run out of energy and you also have a chakra saber that won't run out of energy but will only work for you. It won't activate for anyone else but you and the blades are silver. If anyone asked they were sent to you by your aunt who is coming to Kanoa soon as a present for missing all your birthdays. Tenten said, all right, Aunt Riku. Riku smiled and said, mom will help you with the other surprises. You won't be able to decloak to show your armor or fly until I return, just so you know. Their power core and armor are all built into the locket that you have so don't ever take it off. Tenton nods and Riku said, Sire, as she left in a swirl of water. Tenton thought, I want to learn to do that. Mom said, you will dear but first I need to see what you can and can't do so I can judge your chakra levels and chakra control so I can help you get stronger. Tenton thought, I think I am going to like this. You actually sound like my mom. Mom said, thank you dear, now let's get ready for the day. Tenton smiled and got out of bed. Time skipped two weeks later. Naruto groaned as he tried to sit up and thought, why can't I move? A voice said, because the suit took electrical damage when you came back in time Naruto, making Naruto look at the person who appeared in his view who bent down and placed her hand on his chest and they were gone in a swirl of water. 
They appeared in a clearing two miles away and Naruto heard, Can you hear me now Naruto? Naruto eyes got wide and thought, How can I hear you in my mind and who are you? The woman smiled and said, I'm an Eva from a second future timeline that you lived. I along with another came back in time to save you using the info from the accident that sent you back in time the first time. Tenton alive and waiting to meet you. Naruto eyes got wide and thought, are you lying to me? Eva said, no she's not Naruto. She's already sent me some info to prove that she is who she claims to be and we are currently the day before you became again and originally. Naruto eyes nearly fell out of his head and thought, what's going to happen? Riku said, listen. Even though I am originally Eva I have evolved into a new person and I am now called Riku. I have sent some upgrade information to Eva so she can upgrade your armor. I have unlimited chakra but will only reveal it if necessary. Tenten also has armor now called War Machine that has a copy of her mom's memories and built from there called Mom. In the future we came from she had saw all the memories that you and her had in the timeline you just came from where she died and you were starting out as friends and going to build up from there. I won't tell you much about that timeline and since I have already changed this timeline things won't be the same. Naruto thought, you said you came back to save me, save me from what? Riku said, you tried so hard to change everything that you weakened yourself and Akatsuki captured you and killed you. Now I do have some info that you are going to love though. Naruto thought, I hope it's good because finding out those bastards killed me is a bummer. Riku smiled and said, you know Temari. She's actually your half-sister. Same father, different mother. Naruto screamed, what? Scaring the birds. Riku nods and said, also I got info on your bloodline as well as another relative you have. An uncle who was told you died at childbirth. I have arranged for him to come soon to Kanoa but we got some things to take care of first. Don't worry about Gato. He's dead and Wave Country is recovering nicely with the money I gave them. Naruto smiled sadly and thought, but does that mean I won't ever meet Inari, Tsunami, and Tazuna? Riku said, no, I told them that you heard about the trouble in Wave and wanted to help them and sent me to figure out the best way to help Wave. Officially I hired some ninja to kill Gato and his men when actually I did it myself and I got info on his bank accounts and gave a good chunk to the people of Wave to recover while I took some also to help you, me, and Tenton. Dustin knows the truth about our time travel and he said he will play along as long as you and Tenton take it slow. Officially I am an aunt to Tenton on her mother's side who knew your parents and left shortly before the QB attack and only recently returned to the elemental nation last year and met Dustin seven months ago when he went on a business trip. Now when we go meet the Hockage I want you to play along with what I say and act like I explained it all to you already. Can you do that? Naruto nods as he stands up slowly and noticed that the armor was cloaked and said, yeah, what can you tell me about my uncle? Riku said, just that he's a feudal lord of lightning country and a couple of members of the council are in deep shit. Everything else will be a surprise. Also don't use Raisingan or Raisin Shuriken for the next week or two. I will show the Hokage I know it and that I will help train you in it along with some water and wind jutsu until your uncle gets here to help with your bloodline even though I will secretly be helping you with that. Naruto nods as Riku placed her hand on Naruto's shoulder and they left in a swirl of water. When the reappeared Naruto said, you are so teaching me that, causing Riku to laugh as Naruto noticed they were outside of the Hokage Tower. As they walked in a few ninja glared at Naruto and Riku said, that reminds me, I am going to tell the Hokage that you painting the Hokage monument was my idea to show not only how good you were but how bad security is in this village if an academy student can paint it in broad daylight. Naruto thought, okay. Just then Aruka appeared and said, there you are Naruto, you're coming with me. Riku said, unhand my godson this moment or I will break your hand, as she unleashed a little key. Aruka blinked and Naruto said, sorry about this Aruka sensei, she's a bit, testy. I think it's her time of the month. Riku slapped him upside the head and looked at Aruka and said, so you're the only teacher at the academy Naruto respects her. Aruka blinked and said, um, dot who are you? Riku said, my name's Riku and like I said I am his godmother. I only returned recently to Kanoa after finding out not only did my niece and brother-in-law survive the QB attack but also my godson. I swear he looks just like Minato-kun but he's all Kushina on the inside. Just wait until Ichigo gets here. He's going to flip finding out his nephew is still alive. Naruto rubbed his head and said, sorry about missing class and painting the Hokage monument. 
It was all her idea this time. Aruka looked at Riku and asked, is that true? Riku said, yes it is. I saw how much security in this village has degraded over the years since I was last here and to prove it I had my godson here paint the monument in broad daylight which he did without getting caught. If that paint would have been exploding tags half the village would have been destroyed because security is that low and what is it with the fact an academy student can outrun Chunan, Junan, and Anbu. I swear when Minato-kun was hockage things were different. A voice from behind Aruka said, yes they were. I have to admit that you do make some valid points about security and the fitness of my men. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the Sandime Hokage and you are, as he looked at Riku. Riku said, my name is Riku, Naruto Godmother. The Sandime eyes got wide and he looked at Naruto and Naruto said, Gigi, we have a lot to talk about. Why didn't you tell me about Furball or that my dad was the Yondime? The Sandime frowned and said, I don't. Riku said, I would be careful with your next words Hokage Sama because when the feudal Lord of Lightning gets here in three days you might be going to war with Kumo again as well as their allies as well as the trade embargo that I will slap on your ass if I don't like the answers. The Sandime asked, why would we be going to war with Kumo when the Lightning Lord gets here in three days and why is he coming here? Riku said, because I have notified him that Kushina's son is alive even after Koharu and Homaru sent him a message saying that Naruto died in childbirth. The Lightning Lord is Ichigo Uzumaki, Kushina's older brother, Naruto uncle. At this everyone in the hall that was listening all thought the same thing, oh shit. The Sandime said, perhaps we should discuss this in my office. Riku said, very well. Naruto, did you get that jutsu I showed you down? You know the one to help you pass. Naruto said, oh yeah, watch. Kijbunshin no jutsu, as the hall was filled with Naruto shocking everyone there. Riku said, oh, one more thing Hokage Sama. In case you think I am lying about being Naruto godmother here is something Minato showed me as proof. As she held up her hand and formed a raising gun shocking several of the older ninja and the Hokage and the Sandime said, I see. Very well, we will discuss this in my office. Riku said, Naruto, why don't you go with Aruka to the academy and then meet me at the library after that? Naruto said, but I am not allowed in the library. The lady who operates it has told all the other ladies if they don't kick me out that she would fire them. That stopped the Sandime who was starting to walk away and he asked, how do you know that Naruto? Naruto said, well when Sakura mom first started working there I was trying to get in and I overheard her boss threaten Sakura mom with her job so I never went back to keep people from being fired. All because dad chose me to protect the village that hates my guts, maybe I can go live with my uncle, as he looked down. Aruka frowned as did the Sandime and Riku glared and said, Hokage Sama. I wish to request a mission. I will pay an S rank pay if you will have a trusted team of Anbu who do not hate Naruto henge into Naruto and try going into different business in town and see what kind of reaction they get. If I do not like what I hear I will put a 30% sales tax on all import and export to your village for the next 5 years and in case you don't believe my threat you should know that due to a hostile takeover Gato Shipping Corporation has been taken over by Nami Inc. My company. The Sandime thought, oh shit, not good and said, what if I don't do that mission? Riku said, then you will have a harsher penalty and I will not try to stop Ichigo from leveling this village since I know that three of the guards that are coming with him are the Rakage himself, his brother who is the Jinchuriki of the Hachibi as well as the Jinchuriki of the Nibi and unlike Naruto they have been fully trained to use and unleash the demons. The Sandime rubbed his temples and said, Inu, Neko, Hebi, Tora. Four Anbu appeared and he said, I want you each to take a section of Kanoa and Henge into Naruto and try to go into different business and record the reactions the store owners have toward you and also try the library and any other public places. The four left and the Sandime said, shall we miss Riku? Riku nods and said, now have a good day Naruto and meet me at that ramen stand you were telling me about and bring your sensei here. I want to thank him for seeing you as you and not the QB. Naruto nods and Aruka smiled a little and said, come on Naruto. Naruto said, right Aruka sensei, as they left. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.